Welcome to Man360, I'm your host Brian. Today we have a special end of the year edition of the program. We're excited that we finally launched in 2020 and thought it would be appropriate to reflect back on the first half of season one. Today will consist of a few short clips from interviews so far this season, as well as samples of our outdoor, music, men's health, and travel segments. We'll wrap up the show with some of our favorite bloopers and behind the scenes footage for you to enjoy, including some bloopers from future programs. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. Welcome to Man360, end of the year edition. Like if you could sum up maybe the, the one most important piece of leadership that you could give to either men that are either leading, maybe they're in the military, maybe they're in police, maybe they're just in a business setting, maybe it's just in their home. What would you give and say would be that one main thing that you could give men as far as leadership is concerned? One of the best things I can tell you is to research and look at what successful leaders do. Hmm, that's really good. I think that's really important. I have certain people that I look to uh, there, there, was a, there was research done several decades ago, but it's still applicable. Mm -hmm. If you're in a career field, you're, so you're already trained, you got your degree, your trade, whatever. Yep. If you will spend one hour a day in addition to your work hour, your work day, either researching, studying, or learning your trade or craft, yep. one hour a day, in three years, you will be a nationally recognized expert. Wow. That's all it takes is one hour a day. Wow. Uh, most, most people that study this know the 10,000 hour principle. Right. If yeah. you do 10,000 hours. Alan was an outliers. Uh, correct, outliers it's book. outliers, yeah. and you should be an expert in your field. Right. Um, but is that 10,000 hours of quality time? Right. Is it smoking and joking? Is, is it, it your 10,000 hours or correct. something Correct, is it on quality? your phone, what right. is it? <laughs> but if you will devote 10, one hour, and I'm an avid reader, yeah. uh, researcher, everything I do, and here's the other thing I would, I would tell our viewers today, is uh, position yourself. It's a word I made up called grabbable. You have to be grabbable to be raised up to another level. Right. Um, in 2008, when our economy started tanking, um, in my career fields, there was no movement. As a matter of fact, no raises and a point where I actually had to contribute more to my retirement. But between the, the years of 2010 and 2013, I received three promotions. That's awesome. No raises, but I got three promotions. Right. Well, what is embedded in those promotions are raises. raises. The only way that I could have got that was I positioned myself. I studied hard for promotion tests. Right. I did the things that I was expected to do. And it's little things. Um, for instance, if I would go into my supervisor and turn in a piece of paper, mm -hmm. and then before he would take it, I would say, okay, I know to give it to you. What do you do with it? And I wouldn't let him take it until he told me. <laughs> you know, I know to give it to you, but then what do you right. do with it? Right. And I started learning on my own because there was no systematic way. Yeah. And so take the initiative. Yep and make yourself grabbable. Yeah, that's awesome. That, th those are principles I, I say everybody should be doing. Yeah, for sure. So specifically, what do you feel like you could share with men in just all of your experiences in life, including you know, your journey through cancer, that you could share with them just to help them maybe in their circumstances or situations that they deal with? Like, what do you feel like maybe the one main thing would be? I think I may have already done it. Go yeah. see your doctor. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no, it's, it, it's uh, gosh, you know, uh, I think that being a leader in the family, mm. I, I think that is, is becoming a, a, a vestigial behavior for, with, with, for with sure. us men. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's being like-minded. It's being, I'm equally yoked with my wife, mm -hmm. but being yoked with men too, that's why when they have the men's advance here at, at Karis Bible, yeah. it's great. And, and, and get into a really good Bible study. We're in mm -hmm. a really good Bible study. That's and, awesome. and one of my best buds, Butch Hartman was here. He came in, just flew in with his wife so That's he could awesome. be at the concert last night <laughs> that we were doing. Yeah. And we go, along with the, with the ladies, yep. we lead the way into a, a subacute uh, facility, hospital facility in Los Angeles every Sunday, and we lay hands on the yep. sick and they recover. That's awesome. And so having that bond, it's better, than, it's better than going out. You can shoot hoops, 
But when right. you when when you lay hands on somebody and they, you heal. and they get healed, <laughs> it's a little better than making that's, a three that's, pointer. That's better than draft beer. It's better than like you. Steph Curry it's making a three pointer. Go from ahead, half. keep going with the analogies, pal. <laughs> back further back. So like minded men, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that, that's that, excellent. That, that's it. You can see we're in the amazing state of Utah. We're right in the Canyonlands uh, National Park. And uh, I just wanted to share with you something really very, very vitally important. When you are um, trying to connect with God is that you need to find times to be away from the hustle and bustle of life all the things that happen, whether it's family, whether it's your work, whether it's just all the different stresses that can happen in your life. And I think it's super important that you choose time and make time for yourself. It'll make you a better man. It'll probably make you a better husband, a better son to the people around you. But it's super important that you understand the concept of being able to get away. Even Jesus talked about that. He said, I got away and it was early in the morning to spend time with my father because he needed to hear the father's heart to be able to do the works that God was calling him to do. That's the same thing for you today. Very, very important that you choose and to make time to spend time away and to be alone with God so that you can hear his voice for your life and to help you be a more effective individual on this earth. What do you feel like is one thing if you could tell men in walking through that pain, especially in loss? I think, you know, men don't normally deal with things well, I don't think, in processing anything emotionally, because I think sometimes we're so busy taking care of everyone else that we're like, we'll take care of that later. But what do you feel like is one piece of advice that you can give to men going through pain? Don't be afraid to share it with other people. Mm. Um, don't try to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite verses that came out of that, the Apostle Paul in the beginning of 2 Corinthians, he says, you know, I've been through a lot of pain. Yeah. Christ has comforted me so yeah. I can comfort other people. And so that's Paul awesome. sharing his pain yeah. helped other people. And that's, that's why we have it. So to, to go through that but not share it with anybody else and just ball it, ball it up inside and say, yeah. you know, I made it through and God helped me. That's not what he wants us to do. He yeah. wants us to help others and reach out when yeah, we need it. For sure. I think that's really where we get mileage out of the issues and pain and things that happen in life is when we're give to someone else or we're not we're we're not afraid to open up that that's where god can really start to work and i think it can help make men vulnerable in a good way and then there becomes a purpose for it what what is the purpose yeah. of my son dying at 18. yep well to let me know that god is still going to be there and then i can share that with other people you know yeah. that god is awesome even in your disappointments yeah and so if i can share that then then there is a purpose that's so what do you feel like is, you know, just in, in, as a Christian man and some of the things that you've dealt with and even some of the people you've interacted with, talked to, specifically in being a Christian and just as a man, um, what do you feel like are some of the pitfalls or what are maybe a couple pitfalls that men can fall into that they need to really kind of guard and, and guide in their life? It would probably all be up under the category of pride. Okay. Thinking well, the, the scripture that says, uh, be careful how you stand lest you fall. Yeah. Because you think because things are going so well, that won't happen to me. Uh, I know whenever I preach or talk to, especially young people, I make the point that the devil rarely comes at you with anything new. Mm. He comes back at you in that proven, that known area of weakness. And he'll come back multiplied, yeah. stronger, persistently at that. So one has to guard against that in that Absolutely. regard. And I firmly believe in, you just got finished speaking about it, Following the leading of the Holy Spirit, yeah. I ask him every morning uh, to quiet my soul, open yeah. my heart uh, and my mind to receive your word with clarity, with understanding, with knowledge, 
and understanding and applying God's wisdom in everything I do. Absolutely. If I do that, then I can handle it a lot better. And, and uh, Pastor Brian is what I'm going to call him. So <laughs> if I don't do that first thing in the morning, yeah. boy, once that doorbell starts ringing, the phone starts ringing, mm -hmm. the press of the day, the daily business press, it can really bring you down. I'm not one to yeah. watch his TV who watches TV right. consistently, particularly with respect to the news, because if you're saturated in that, it will begin to affect you yeah. in subtle ways. So I saturate myself in the Word. Yeah, I think uh, you know, our friend Marilyn Hickey. Mm -hmm. Love Dr. Says, Hickey. She always says... Uh, She's got know, more energy than the two of oh, us put together, absolutely, but go ahead. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, she's had more years in the earth to be able to perfect those things. And so, she has so, done more that. Than us. Yes, she has. But I know one thing she says is she doesn't read the news. She prays the news. Ooh. And uh, she's mentioned that. that a few times. And I really appreciate that because, and even as you said, not just the perception of what the news is, mm -hmm. but I think it's important where we set our mind, where we set our heart. I think that's a huge pitfall for men and really where we kind of guide, that really will guide and direct our life is where we set our mind. I think that's really important. Mindful that, especially in the case of those of us who are married, that our wives will follow us willingly as long and to the degree that we follow Jesus Christ. Yes. I also have grandkids, so I'm very mindful. They're little movie cameras watching yep. and listening to everything that you say yep. and do. Absolutely. St. Francis of Assisi is at least the one to whom the credit is given that uh, many people would prefer to see a good sermon than mm. to hear a good sermon. Absolutely. And I can see that in my grandkids. So I'm very mindful of that, not trying to fake it, but to stay immersed in God's word so that I can live it. Yeah. So basically you're pastor JB to your mm -hmm. grandkids. You're pastoring Absolutely. them. You're leading them. You're guiding Who them. Who would have thunk it ever that I would be <laughs> ordained as a minister some many years ago, back in 09, right. quite frankly. But Pastor Brian, I am flat out loving it. I like, before I was a little concerned because, you know, in the athletic arena right. around a bunch of guys, right. you know, they're like, they may let loose with some words that are not, you know, um, edifying. Yeah. And they'll say, oh, JB, you know, we're sorry. And I say, no, 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 go ahead and, you know, do what you're doing. Yeah. No, now I've grown to the point by saying thank you very much yeah. because I want to be that difference maker. Yep. And also mm -hmm. for them to know, like you mentioned before, about how when they have trouble and they have things happening, it's not like just go ahead and act the way you want. It's like, no, I appreciate you saying that because then they know when they have those issues in life that they can come to you and you can pray for them. Absolutely. And I know the truth and I better act like I know the truth Absolutely. as well. So today we are on the set of Robert's program, Christian Fitness, and I've asked Robert to talk a little bit about some of the real basic stretches and some of the things that you can maybe do exercise-wise at the office and at home. So Robert, why don't you lead us in a few of these exercises? I was already sweating and getting yeah. nervous just talking about, <laughs> we said, we're going to do this segment about exercise, and I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. So Yeah, but we're in jeans, and I know. I've got dress shoes on. So I know, I've got my fancy a... socks on. We're just, it's just <laughs> it's crazy. It's going to be a simple, simple, some yes. simple exercises for you. <laughs> Stuff that, you know, as guys, we can do at the office or some simple ones that you can do at home. So we're going we're gonna to pretend we're at the office today, even though we're kind of outside and kind of our, our man shed here in the grass with our Christian fitness. Uh, but stuff you can do at the office. Um, ergonomics, so important. Our posture is so important. But unfortunately, in a lot of offices, you're on the computer or mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're on your cell phone. So you're like this all day long, which is the worst thing for your posture. So I'd encourage you just a couple times a day, maybe every hour, every however often we were talking about this earlier. Mm -hmm. you know, do I need to set a timer? You can set a timer on your email, set a timer on your watch. Um, every time a, a particular thing happens in your daily event, maybe then that's your trigger mm -hmm. to say, hey, I'm going to exercise right now. That's I'm going to do this exercise every time my phone rings. Brian said he'd be exercising all day long. <laughs> <laughs> or every time my email, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Something that happens every hour on the hour maybe. So mm -hmm. just set a timer, a reminder. But some simple exercises to improve your ergonomics. Um, number one, we're going to start with the neck. And one of the easiest things is just touch your chin lightly and push it back just a little bit. Now, why are we doing this? <laughs> just push it back three or four times. Not too like, far that it hurts. I feel like we're a boy band right now. Yeah. <laughs> But this is so good for your neck, only because the average head weighs about 10 to 12 pounds. As you tilt it forward, if you get to about a 45 degree angle, now it weighs 60 pounds. So wow. imagine 60 pounds of pressure on these little tiny muscles. I wow. mean, you imagine curling 60 pounds on a big bicep, let alone that much pressure on these little muscles. So anyway, push the neck, neck hurt back. just thinking about that. <laughs> just push the neck back a little bit. And that'll help with your neck. You know, you could of course twist it during the day. Look left and right. No, the boy you band can moves. Tilt it down. Boy band moves. <laughs> <laughs> so that's for the neck. So that's some ergonomics for your neck. Love the wrist to prevent carpal tunnel syndrome. Keep your wrist nice and limber. Easy one. Just pull the fingertips back. I can't go as far as yours. Just pull them back. Well, it's years and years of martial arts. And then twist to this side. Switch oh my sides. Gosh. And just put a little bit of pressure. You know, you're not going to really, you're not going to injure yourself. Huh. So you go till there's a good tight okay. tension and hold it. 
and then go the other way with the palm down. That's better. And then a switch. <laughs> and then one of my favorites, because again, a lot of times we're on computers, we're hunched over, we're looking, doing things this way, is just grasp your hands behind your back and try to lock out your elbows if you can. If you can lock out your elbows, which will open up your chest. So you just want to open up the chest. So basically, we're just pulling our shoulders. Yeah, look how his shoulders are pulled back now. Look at I that. feel like a peacock now. <laughs> Surely. Yeah, don't try to do the neck at the same okay. time. That would... <laughs> so just open up the shoulders, and then you relax. So there's, what, four or five? And those are really just stretches. Mm -hmm. But I'm starting to sweat a little bit. I so know. You see, just, <laughs> just from stretching, the muscles heat up. So you actually are. You burn some calories, and so there's a lot of benefit yeah. to it. Uh, but really, it's the posture. Then when you get back on your computer, you're like, man, I feel, I, man, I feel better now. I'm not going to. I could send some more emails for like CTN yeah, there now. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> go through all those, those Gmails. Yeah, Lovely seriously. Things those are. So just some quick ergonomic exercises that you can do at the office. Okay. Set your timer, set your watch, however you want to do that. Yep. And then uh, let's go to the house now. Let's go to the house. House. Things you can do at home. People love to sit on their couch and watch TV. Is, I mean, that, our, that, is that our exercise that's of our sitting exercise on the couch? Is to watch I can TV. do that. So these are what we call I can our do that. couch exercises. I'm, I'm but exercising. You gotta sit forward to do okay, these. I'm sorry. I guess I All right, One of my forward. favorites is okay. it's an isometric, and almost anyone can do this. Okay. Just take a leg, hold it out, and just hold it there. So it's just an isometric. You think, Robert, that doesn't even do anything. Try this at home. Because trust me, after 10, 15 seconds, or eating this chips. front thigh that you're holding up is going to start to burn. Then you would switch, of course, switch legs, and then just hold this one up. So now we're, now we're can can dancers. There you, then do or, both we're Russian then dancers. Hold them both. Okay, sorry. And now you'll notice, see how he leaned back a little bit? You know what that did? It engaged the core. So now he's actually flexing. He didn't tell his me my core would be engaged. <laughs> to hold up the thighs. I you know you can't tell, but this is there's a lot of pressure. It is really I difficult. I love how you're talking while you're doing this, and I'm just like barely <laughs> like at a 45 degree angle hanging onto the edge of the couch. Oh my gosh. You okay? Does this burn? No, it's good. It's hey, burning? I can do this all day. All right. Okay, we'll see. Let's how get long the, is this let's get the, let's get the have, football have game like on. Minutes. I'm starting to shake a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel my core shaking. Okay, if you're starting to shake, then pull your knees up. Oh, that's great. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't help. Them. That was worth You gotta pump them though. There you go. It's another simple one. Now we've been doing okay, this when I watch you do this on television, it seems a lot easier when I'm sitting in my <laughs> office going, Robert and Lori are on that Christian fitness program just doing that. That seems so easy. Oh, my gosh. All right. Getting you. You feel it? it I'm feeling yeah. it. Anyway, so that, there's just two simple ones. Of course, the squat, one of the best exercises there is, only yep. because you're engaging the largest muscle groups, which are your quads, your hamstrings, and your back pocket, as we call it. But a squat is simply standing up. So we would just stand up to do a squat. Come down. <laughs> Notice how much taller I am than Robert. Well, that's Listen, why I everybody, sat down. Here, you it's a long way up and down for me. I'm not joking. Watch. <laughs> look at how. Look at the distance. Look at that headroom I got. Look how quickly I can do mine. Because I only go like that far. Because I'm so much smaller. There. I'll stand up while you're down. Okay, we're still viewers, the same height. Viewers, we don't want to make you sick from the camera going up and down, but we're just letting you know this is exciting. All right. So instead of squatting. Yes. Now just come up about three or four inches. Okay. And hold that. Okay, this is when I got in trouble in basketball and I had to do wall oh, sits. Yes, it's exactly what this is. Oh, it's a wall gosh, sit. That's... You do it in martial arts, you do it in wrestling, you do it in all kinds. Am I doing this? <laughs> We're getting instructions. It's another dance move. Everybody's I know, coming I up got, with their own ideas. We got our, our wives are giving us dance moves. This is the men's <laughs> program. This, this, Not the this. women's program, this is the men's program. <laughs> <laughs> I love isometrics like this because now, I mean, we're, there's no mobility at all. Let's sit and we're talk just about this for a little bit longer. Well, your thighs yeah, my thighs are coming up just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a wall set from the basketball days, from wrestling yep. days. Martial arts, we call it a horse stance because you're actually acting like you're riding the horse. Yeah. But these are simple things. While you're watching TV, mm -hmm. you're sitting there for, I mean, the average person watches, you don't even want to know how many hours. Right. They say four to five hours right. a night. Commercials are anywhere two to three minutes. Just do this for two or three minutes. Right. If we just did, you hold your legs like this for two minutes. Oh, I get You're going to feel it. Oh, I know. You I'm, do like, this? I'm like, I'm like I, I get progressively leaned back the more as I'm going here. You're going to be like this. And I'm like, oh, now see, okay, so basically if you go this far, then you can just lay down. Look at Robert, I got it. Then just sleep. I got it. Look at my legs are straight. We're back uh, on it. You do burn calories just sitting still, too. That's so, true. You know, you well, we won't talk about that. Right, right, right. So it's very interesting how. You know, you, I think one of the things we were talking about is do we want to use weights with this? And you don't need weights no. to be able to really get a good workout. Yeah, I'm sweating. And we've, I mean, we've only been going, what, <laughs> five, six minutes? Well, because you're with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I exert a lot of energy. That's what Yolanda tells me all the time. So. Yeah, weights are great. Resistance training, yeah. you really need to incorporate it a couple days a week. But this is just stuff that you can do. You're watching TV. Commercial break comes on. Instead yep. of, now, oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to bring this up. Yeah, please. <clears throat> Talking about when and how do I do this? Yep. 
How about every time you change channels, you okay. have to do a squat? Because a lot of people love to channel surf, so they'll switch 30, 40 wow. channels. You do 30 or 40 squats, you probably won't switch channels as much. But I anyway, don't. just to remind I'm going to get used to like channels that I just watch and not CTN programs. CTN message. Just yeah, CTN. Audio. Just leave it on CTN. <laughs> Find something fun. I mean, yeah. and that's why I didn't bring weights out today because a lot of people, well, I don't have dumbbells. Oh, I can't read. You know, they're over there. I left it. No excuse. Right. Just have fun with it. Do right. something fun. Otherwise, you're not going to do it. Right. So make these fun. Challenge your wife. Challenge your buddies if you're over watching football. Hey, right. guys, I saw on, uh, on Brian's show there's this fun thing where just hold your legs out during the commercial yep. break. That's awesome. Well, and even, you know, obviously we're having a good time here. If you can't yeah. tell, Robert and I like to have a good time. We both went through a lot of stuff in our life mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, it's fun to be able to laugh now that we look in retrospect at the things we've gone through. But it's really interesting, too, about how and the importance of just making life fun. You know, we can enjoy our time and, you know, with exercise, I was teasing Robert a little bit before about this is a segment I was looking least forward to of all the ones we did with him. And, um, but I just really encourage you um, to really understand that being, having fun and exercise and these kind of things are important. They're good and uh, they can be really helpful for us in life. Absolutely. So thanks Absolutely. Robert for helping Appreciate me you, sweat. Yeah, Appreciate that. Yeah, it is. Have a good it's day. It's good. good stuff. <laughs> Uh, I'd say two big things. When I got started in ministry, I had a wrong concept that I was supposed to be living full time of the gospel, mm -hmm. and that's true eventually. But when you aren't, when you're just starting and nobody was coming, yeah. I should have been working a job. But I thought I was sinning against God if I went and worked and got a job. Wow! So when Jamie and I got married, I had five thousand dollars cash. I turned it all into hundred dollar bills, and I went to a Seven Eleven store and gave them all out in one day, just to people I'd never <laughs> seen. I couldn't wait to get out on faith. That was one of the dumbest things <laughs> I have ever done in my life. And for about six years, Jamie and I struggled. She wow. was eight months pregnant, and we went two weeks with no food. I mean, nothing wow. but water. Yeah. And um, so that was. One of the things I've learned, I tell people, <laughs> don't do that. Learn at my expense. Yeah. And then another thing that really, uh, the, probably the second most important encounter with the Lord that I've ever had was January the 31st, 2002. And the Lord spoke to me and told me I was limiting him by my small thinking. Wow. And that was from Psalm 78, 41. And mm -hmm. so, man, he challenged me to start thinking big. Yeah. And since that time, you know, our uh, income has gone up 20 or 30 times. Our wow. outreach has increased. I mean, there is just no comparison. Yeah. There's no way to explain it except God. And I was limiting God by my small thinking. And I think that a lot of ministers, I think, yeah. I think everybody does this. Yeah. That we have people telling us that you can't do this, and then your own failures, and then your own insecurities and stuff. Yeah. It's just constantly you know, throttling you back. And, and to think big uh, is an effort. It yeah. goes against the grain in this world. Absolutely. So, oh. mm -hmm. The Bible says in Job chapter 32, verse 8, what, uh, every man has a spirit that allows you to understand God. Right. So if you're not feeding, nurturing, developing your spirit, you're deficient spiritually. Right. And so men need to be wholesome, body, soul, and spirit, then thoughts, words, and actions. Mm -hmm. So every chapter has... Uh, an expression of what man needs to be responsible for. The men who are not responsible for their thoughts will, will be led astray. Right. Uh, Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks, so is, so he. is he. That's right. So if you're not careful what you think, you're going down the wrong track. Right. Ph um, Philippians 4, 8 says, uh, whatever is good, noble, true, holy, virtuous, think on these things. Right. Then uh, chapter 5 is time, talents, and treasure, mm -hmm. um, which also are different areas. We have a limited time upon the earth. Uh, God has given us all different talents. If we use our time and talents accurately, we will all be prosperous and wealthy. Right. We'll have treasure to steward. Right. And so that teaches man that. The, the, cornerstone of faithful, uh, the cornerstone of character is faithfulness, right. chapter 6. Um, uh, the char what, what is character? If the cornerstone of character is faithfulness, what is character? Character is what a man thinks, mm -hmm. what a man speaks, and what a man does. Right. A man who thinks one thing but does another or speaks about another is off keel. He's not headed right. right. So we teach men, whatever you think about, make sure it's the words you speak, make sure it's the life you're living, your conduct. Right. It's interesting too how, you know, for both of you guys, I feel like some of the restrictions that you had actually developed who you are, that without those restrictions, it wouldn't have pushed you into doing more music and, you know, and even the strictness of the, of the Christian strictness in the home really helped you really to develop, you know, music that you didn't have that you wanted to listen to. 
Uh, that, that's it, man. You know, actually, Greg and I were just talking about that the other day, um, about just how certain situations you develop character. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Cer certain things um, develop you. And, of course, the Bible says, you know, count it all as joy, you know. Absolutely. When, and so everything that you go through in life, like you said, it kind of molds you into being able to do what you want to do right. even better. And so for what you had you know, mentioned, you know, restrictions and different things like that, yeah. you know, it kind of forces you to be creative. And Absolutely. so, so you're, now your creativity, your bar is up here. And right. so when you get used to just being up here, then it's kind of like, all right, I'm not like, like reaching. This is just where I'm used right. to working. You know what right. I'm saying? Well, and talk about the new album. You have a new album coming out that we wanted to talk about and kind of highlight real, just real quick. Kind of talk about the motivation behind the album. And yeah. yeah. So the new album is called To Come This Far. Uh, it released in July of last year. And it's the first album that I've ever put out, actually. Um, long story why it got to that point. But uh, first album that I ever put out, and I was just super proud of every song on that track. It was mm -hmm. just from the ground up, everything that I had wanted it to be. It has a, a great message. Basically what the message behind it is, is God did not bring you this far just to bring you this far. Um, God doesn't do That's things awesome. by accident. He has a purpose. I look at the life yeah. of Joseph um, specifically when I think about that message because, man, Joseph had every reason to be like, God, what are you doing in my life? Like, mm -hmm, yeah. I, I've gone through all of this nonsense. Mm -hmm. I'm still serving you. Wh like, what's going to happen? But, you know, little did Joseph know he had, God had a plan for him to save himself, save his family, and save the nation that he was in. Yeah. Um, God used him for great things. And so, you know, looking at that story, looking at our lives, God did not bring us this far just for the sake of bringing us this far. He always has a plan that is going to turn around and give him glory in the end. And yeah. so that was the motivation behind, um, you know, just the message of the album and everything. Yeah. I hope you've enjoyed Man 360 this past year and feel like you were entertained, but also challenged in some way. If you've watched more than one episode, you'll notice that we use our website, man360.tv, as an extension of the show and not just a static connection point for viewers. Our additional content page is dedicated to giving you resources and some fun additional content to help enhance each episode we air. We've also provided our Instagram and Facebook, man360.tv, for you to connect with us. I want to pray for you as we close out this year. God, I thank you for those who watch this show and that they can be the kind of men who look to you for guidance and direction. Whether it's for themselves or their families, I pray that this next year would be dedicated to listening to you and your direction for their lives. I pray protection for each man and their family that they would put you first in everything they do. Be with each one right now. We pray it all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that 2021 is the best year of your life, and hopefully Man360 can be a part of that continued deeper trust in Jesus. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight on this end of the year edition, and we will see you next year right here on Man360. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. I had an interesting time with Disneyland. Oh my gosh, with Disneyland. It's just in Disneyland, very simple. With Disneyland, with Mr. Disneyland. Before we hear the second half of the interview, I have an interesting time. Oh my gosh. I had an interesting time at, I had an interesting time, I had an interesting time at Disneyland. Dr. Molina gave us lots of things to think about. Let me see. Let's do our 360 degree review from today's program. Dr. Molina gave us... Alrighty. I hope you enjoyed all the things we learned and had the fun we had today. Oh my gosh. Okay, so God, we thank you that you're helping me to get through this segment. This did not take this long. Thank you for guiding and directing my words. Welcome to Man360, I'm your host, Brian. Today we have a special end of the... Praise the Lord. Bye.